In this video, we'll talk finally, you might say, about wave mechanics and about wave functions. Um, and I'll introduce this here um, from the point of view of um, operators and the operator formalism that we've worked in basically since the beginning of the class. So let's consider, for starters, the, um, the Hilbert space L2 over R, um, so the, the space that consists of the, the square integrable functions um, on the real axis, on a one-dimensional line. Um, and let's assume that we have a state x that uh, is an eigenvector of, um, of the position operator. Um, we saw earlier that uh, this is kind of ill-defined on L2 over R, uh, but at this point we're not going to care. Um, if we assume that this eigenvector is well-defined, we'll, uh, we'll just persist and we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. So if this eigenstate x is an eigenvector of this operator, then the operator on x will be the position x times um, the state x. If we now apply a space translation on this state, on this eigenvector, and we apply a space trans translation by applying this unitary operator that's e to the i, e to the minus i, a times the momentum operator over h bar, where a is the distance that we're shifting over, and if we use the canonical commutation relation, which I've written here as this operator identity, so that unitary operator um, dagger x, that unitary operator must be equal to the position operator plus a shift in uh, in the position. So then we can um, we can write it in the following form. So we'll uh, we'll see what the impact is or what the effect is of of x on the operator, the operator, sorry, the position operator on the transformed um, state x. So if we apply the position operator on ua um, on x, and we'll apply ua on x, which is this exponential um, on x, uh, we can use the canonical commutation relation to swap the orientation or to swap the order of x and this exponential, but we'll pick up this uh, um, uh, a times the identity. And then we can put it all together um, by realizing that if we have x plus a operating on, um, on the eigenstate x, we'll find x plus a as a number. Um, so ultimately we end up with um, this uh, exponential multiplied with the state and the whole thing pre-multiplied with an x plus a factor. So now let's look at that in a little bit more detail. We have basically here operator operating on a state is x plus a times um, that uh, that same state, okay? The state here now is the shifted state. Uh, and so it turns out that uh, um, if we have an eigenstate or an eigenvector x, we can construct any eigen, eigenvector ua times x, which now has a different eigenvalue, an eigenvalue x plus a. Basically, what we've shown here is that um, this operator x must necessarily have a continuous spectrum since we can choose any a to um, show that any different value of x or any different value of x here um, can be uh, an eigenvector of this uh, system. And since we have a continuous spectrum, um, we must choose our normalization such that the scalar product of two of those eigenvectors with each other has to be um, this delta function. So again, refer back to the video where we talked about the, the intricacies of, of working in infinite dimensional spaces. So we choose as our normalization for this position vector, uh, for this position operator and its eigenvectors on L2R, the fact that it has to be um, delta, a delta function of x minus x prime. Um, and of course, our uh, um, notation will now be that our, our operator, our shift operator u over a distance a, on x will just write as x plus a because this is going to be an eigenvector just as um, x itself was an eigenvector. Now what's the interpretation of this eigenvector um, x? So that is a particle that is exactly at a position x. It's fully localized and as we'll see later or as we've already done actually in the classes, uh, um, this means that it, the um, the it can take on all possible momenta. The dispersion in the momentum is uh, is infinitely large. 
Um, that's the only way that we can uh, satisfy the Heisenberg um, uncertainties. And so since our position eigenvector is not an element of L2 over R, which we've shown before, um, it's not a physical state. Um, and in other words, also, if we have a state that is not physical, it cannot be an element of our Hilbert space. Um, so ultimately, the states that are physically re realizable are the states phi that are in L2 over R, um, and that will be somehow related to these x, but will not be x specifically. So x is um, is an, an eigenvector, which we've shown before is not um, an element of L2 over R. So there's, there's certainly, you know, we've, we've termed this a, a pseudo eigenvector. Um, so it is um, a pseudo eigenvector. It's not an element of our Hilbert space. So it's not a physically realizable state, but it's still going to be useful to work with it as if it were um, uh, a, a proper eigenvector. So with our eigenvectors uh, X, we can now calculate the matrix elements and then form a um, spectral decompositions and write a completeness relation. So first of all, the matrix elements, if we take our operator X and we put it between X prime and X, so that's a matrix element between two basis factors or basis states. Um, if we have our operator operating on the, the cat here, we just get X. Um, we end up with X prime uh, scalar product with X. That's our normalization relation. Um, and that gives us our delta function. So this allows us to write down matrix elements um, for this particular um, operator between those um, basis vectors. And, you know, never mind that there's an infinite number of those basis vectors, um, those eigenvectors x and x prime. Um, but this is the connection that we write between them. Okay, we can extend this if we write any function f of x there. Um, we'll end up with f of x, where x is now a number, times this delta function. Okay, so that allows us to write matrix elements of any function of our um, eigen, uh, any function of our operator x. Now the other thing we can do is we can write um, a projector. Uh, so this is the the projection operator on this eigenvector x. So that will just be you know cat bra um, of this eigen eigenvector. Um, from this projector, we can also project onto a subspace, namely the subspace of all eigenvectors where the eigenvalue is between A and B. Now, since we have an infinite number um, of states, we don't just take the sum, but we take the integral over dx um, from A to B of these projection operators, Px. And then finally, what we can do is we can do this between minus infinity and plus infinity to span the entire space we must necessarily end up with an identity as this projection operator. Um, so any state will be able to be projected onto the full set of eigenvectors. Um, and so that gives us our um, uh, completeness relation where we, we integrate between minus infinity and plus infinity of dx uh, with the cat and the brow of the eigenvectors in x. Okay, so let's now look at uh, physical states. So remember that the eigenvectors, bra, uh, sorry, cat um, of x uh, are not physical states, not physically realizable states. So let's now look at the states that are physically realizable. And let's look at one of them um, that we just call phi, and we'll expand in a basis, um, in this x basis in particular. So um, let's start with uh, just using our completeness relation. We have this integral of dx, um, cat x bra x um, and then we have our operator or, or state phi now what does this seem to mean um, we have this uh, scalar product of x and phi which in the finite case we could implement uh, interpret as the um, component of our uh, state phi that is along the direction of the eigenvector x and so now we'll look at it again as the component of our state phi along eigenvector um, x at basically a position x, the component of phi at that position x. How much of the state phi is at the position x? Now let's look at the matrix elements now of, uh, of two particular um, operators. Uh, so first the position operator and then uh, the, the translation um, transformation operator. So first we look at the matrix element between x and, um, and the state phi. 
So if you look at this, um, we, we just find x by having this operate to the left. Um, and so we get x and then um, this uh, scalar product of x with phi, again, the component of phi along the eigenvector x. Um, I've written this here already as phi of x, but I'll come back to that in a second. Um, we'll do this for the translation operator as well. So now we have the translation operator operating on um, the left side. And we know that uh, this operation turns this state into an x minus, one, x minus a state. So what we end up here now with is um, the uh, scalar product of x minus a with phi. Now, um, the first term here, this x uh, scalar product with phi, and also the component of x along, um, a, 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 along the, the eigenvector x, seems to indicate that we can assign a function phi of x um, that is in L2 over R um, to this uh, scalar product of x and phi, or in other words, the projection of phi on the eigenvector x. That means we can also, um, apply that here in the second case and so instead of having phi of x we now have phi of x minus a um, and so uh, we've been able to write this using this this function um, that's on uh, that's a function in the Hilbert space of L2 over R. Now let's look at uh, um, at this last expression in a little bit more detail if we uh, um, now apply an oper a, a, a translation operator on phi and then um, consider that function as a function of x, we'll find phi of x minus a. Um, that's basically what this second expression here for the matrix element um, says. We can expand this for small a around the identity, so we can of course expand um, the, the exponential fairly easily. Here we'll just do a ta Taylor series around phi of x and we'll pick up our first derivative here. If we now compare we have an identity operator here that explains the first term and then our second term in the expansion is our term that has the momentum here and it has our time has our first derivative of the position um, on the right hand side so putting those two, two those two terms on the left hand side and the right hand side in comparison we see that the effect of the momentum operator on phi is um, multiplication with minus i h bar and derivative with uh, the position. So um, what uh, what this means, if we, we summarize this, in particular this first matrix element and this last expression here, um, so if we have x applying on um, the, the, the state phi, then we'll get x times this function phi back. And if we have the momentum operator applying on the state phi, then uh, we'll find this function that's given by minus i h bar. Uh, ddx of phi. And again, these are the two same expressions for the operators x and p that we've already shown satisfy the canonical commutation relations of x and p um, equals i h bar times the identity. So uh, we've shown before that these are, um, are sufficient um, and now we actually see where they come from, namely by expanding what we've called phi um, and which is part of L2 over R, which really is the projection of the state phi onto the eigenvector associated with that position x. Now we can of course expand the treatment here. Uh, we can look at two states, phi and chi. The scalar product of phi and chi um, we can be obtained by introducing here um, a completeness relation, an integral minus infinity to plus infinity of uh, Get x dx bra x. Um, so we'll see that we here get um, our chi x star, and here we get our phi of x. So ultimately, we end up with a scalar product that is just uh, um, the overlap integral between chi and phi. If we now pick chi to be identical to phi, um, then we end up with an integral between minus infinity and plus infinity over the norm of phi squared. Uh, and because our states phi are normalized, we expect this to be um, to be one as well, and so that gives our normalization over the wave function phi of x. Now the interpretation then is that uh, the scalar product of of uh, x and phi, or in other words, the projection of phi onto the eigenvector x, or the component 
of phi along eigenvector x is this function phi of x. And that's the probability amplitude of finding a particle at x. The square of that, or the modulus squared of that, is the probability density. And if we take an integral between a and b of this probability density, we find a probability of finding a particle between um, position values a and b. So that integral over the, um, the, the, the squared modulus. And if we now look back where this came, came from, that's of course the projection operator onto um, the state, um, uh, projection operator onto the eigenvalue sub, eigenvector subspace for eigenvalues between a and b. And so that will give us ultimately the probability starting from this probability density. Another way to think about this is that um, phi x modulus squared times dx is a probability to find um, the, the particle in an interval of width dx around um, phi of x. So all of this is in uh, is what we obtained now by looking at this uh, at x as um, the set of basis states here. Now we don't have to do that. Um, we picked x as one way to uh, um, to to look at our states. Uh, we could p we could pick p as um, the set of eigenvectors to use as a basis for for our states. Um, one of the things we know is that because the uh, commutators between x and p are non-zero. Uh, we won't be able to pick the same eigenvectors. So there won't be any, uh, you know, we won't be able to reuse the eigenvectors. We'll have different eigenvectors. So now let's pick in this um, basis where, uh, now let's work in this basis where uh, the state P is an eigenvector of the operator, the momentum operator P. So in this case, uh, the operator on the state P will be little p in the eigenvalue times the state P. Now we can, we can define a corresponding wave function chi for this particular value of p that depends on x, which now gives my projection of this eigenvector p onto the x eigenvectors. So this is where I'm making my transformation from my p eigenvector basis to my x eigenvector basis. So how do I uh, calculate that? Well, let's look at that in two different ways. Um, we uh, can uh, have our, uh, um, our x projection operator or our uh, um, x bra work on the um, uh, momentum operator on p. So first of all, this momentum operator will just give me the value of p itself, and then I have xp, which I've called chi sub p here. The other thing I can do is have um, is use the explicit uh, um, the explicit form of the momentum operator in x space, which is minus ih bar d dx. Okay, operating now on chi sub p of x. So I have my momentum operator, or my momentum times chi sub p um, is minus ih bar d dx times chi sub p, or on, operating on chi sub p. We've looked at this before as well, and we've said that there's a, a solution for this, which is c times e to the i p x over h bar for some constant c. And the first thing we realized in that case is that, again, this is not part of um, or Hilbert space. If we take the absolute value of this squared and integrate it from minus infinity to plus infinity, we get a divergent integral. So once again, my um, eigenvector of the momentum is not a physically, phys physically realizable state, um, it's a pseudo eigenvector, but still we persist and we keep using it because it is useful. Um, so what is our quantity C here? Well, if, um, if P is uh, an eigenvector, and again, we have a continuous space, um, or a continuous um, uh, range of, uh, of eigenvalues, then the um, scalar product of p prime and p will have to be this delta function. Um, if I now insert completeness relation here, I get my chi p star uh, p prime, and I get my chi p, uh, and so this will have to be this delta function. Um, if I now plug in the values for chi p with this value of c, then I'll find that c will have to be one over square root of two pi h bar um, to give me the exact normalization here to be um, this uh, delta function of p minus p prime. 
Okay, the other thing we can do is instead of using normalization, I can use the completeness relation. If I take a full sum over all of my momentum eigenvectors, I want to be I want to obtain a uh, identity operator. So um, if I now apply uh, a bra x prime on one side and a cat x on the other side, I'll have my x prime p from this part and my p x from this part. Um, so I'll find my chi uh, sub p x prime and integral with chi p x and this will have to be equal to um, the delta function of uh, x minus um, x prime. So if we now look at some generic state, again this is a physically realizable state as opposed to the previous p eigenvector which was not physically realizable since it's got a perfectly um, determined momentum which means it has a, um, an, an infinitely uh, undetermined um, position. If we now take a, a generic state phi in the x representation, so we can write it as this function phi of x, we can find what this state corresponds to in the p representation. So in other words, what is um, phi p, or the uh, scalar momentum, uh, the scalar um, product of p with phi, or the component of the state phi projected on the eigenvector p, that will be another function, phi tilde of p, and uh, I can again introduce a completeness relation here with my x dx x. That will give me my first term here, which is p with x. That's the chi sub p that we've introduced earlier. And then here I have x um, with phi, which is my phi of x. So I find an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of um, constant times e to the minus i p x over h bar times my function phi of x. And so if we look at this, it basically means that um, our phi tilde must be the Fourier transform of our position um, wave function phi of x. Um, and of course, the other way around, uh, um, position wave function will have to be the Fourier transform of uh, phi tilde of the momentum wave function. So um, finally, I just want to summarize that we have here now Similarly to the, the um, position space, we can look at momentum space, where in um, momentum space, the momentum operator has, as, uh, has the very simple expression where we just multiply with the momentum. The position operator has a more complicated expression. I mean, it's basically the, the converse of what the momentum operator looks like in, um, in the position space. So we get IH bar DDP over phi tilde P. And if I now want to calculate the probability of finding a momentum between k and q, I have an integral over k to q of phi tilde of the momentum modulus squared over the in, uh, integrated over the momentum p. So there's the, of course, as you already know, from undergraduate quantum mechanics, there is um, the, the, the connection between a description of wave functions in position space and in momentum space. But I hope in this lecture, you got some uh, appreciation of where this actually comes from in terms of, uh, of operators um, and, and projections on eigenvectors where those eigenvectors x and p are not physically realizable um, states because they're not part of the Hilbert space um, that we're working in. Okay, that's it for, uh, for this video.